success, we think should be the ticket to make Illinois perform a lot better. And it turns out we look exactly like the U.S. in terms of the allocation of our activity across these broad sectors here. There's only one sector which is more than one percentage point different, that's leisure and hospitality. Right? All the others are within a half percentage point of the U.S. We have the optimal portfolio. The question is, why isn't it performing? And that's my frustration with Quinn's uh, Recovery Commission, that they didn't ask that question. Why is it with this portfolio we are underperforming the U.S.? Why is it that our information is declining more rapidly? Why is it financial activities are not growing in the state of Illinois? Why is it business services are not growing? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. The other part, and I'm going to stop in a couple of minutes, uh, that I think you need to know is um, the degree to which we can grow our way out of it in the way that Obama is trying to suggest for the U.S. economy, that's to expand our exports. And what is not known in, uh, in most of the U.S. is that while international exports are very important, for states like Illinois, it's our domestic trade, our domestic exports, that are by far much larger. Um, and what is even more uh, dramatic, at one sense of both a problem and opportunity, is of our domestic exports, 40% of them go to our surrounding states, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. And as we've seen in the last uh, few years, those are not states, I'm going to jump over this, which are doing particularly well. So just to put this in perspective, uh, these are data for 2007. Illinois' total exports were $448 billion. Of those, $48 billion were foreign. And of those foreign exports, 36% went to Canada and Mexico. So we're very tied in terms of our portfolio to, to NAFTA. And domestically, you can see 32% uh, of our exports, and it varies uh, from year to year. Somewhere between 32 and 40% go to uh, the rest of the Midwest. And, and here is the economic opportunity. If, if those five Midwestern states were separate countries in a free trade agreement, they would be the seventh largest free trade agreement in the world. And, and people don't realize the volume of flows moving between those five states is enormous. And unlike the European Union, um, we don't collaborate. Uh, try to get a governor to take some pride in, isn't it terrific that Michigan is growing? We still think in football terms. You know, in other words, how can you love somebody from Ohio? You know, because that's where Ohio State is. But it turns out Ohio is one of our strongest demanders for goods and services produced in Illinois. We should be cheering for the Ohio economy and for the Michigan economy to recover because we are so very heavily dependent. And we have estimated that hundreds of thousands of jobs are directly and indirectly dependent upon those domestic exports. And so the economic health of the Midwest as a whole and its rapid recovery are going to be very, very critical to our recovery. Um, I'm going to jump over that and just s stop with a, a couple of uh, forecasts. If I haven't depressed you enough, let's look into the future. All right. <clears throat> over the period 1992 to 2007, you can see here that Illinois, in terms of gross regional product, gross state product, grew at about 2%. The, US, uh, the rest of the U.S. outside the Midwest, 3.3%, and the U.S. as a whole, about 3%. So we grew at about two-thirds the rate of, uh, of the country as a whole. Our forecasts, unfortunately, um, are not any brighter. Uh, a lower rate of growth between 2007 and 2040, um, which is still under that for the rest of the U.S. And just in case you were concerned that I was choosing an arbitrary number, if we look at it in terms of jobs, 0.8% uh, growth, this is an annual growth, as opposed to 1.3% for the U.S. as a whole. And in terms of personal income, 1.8% uh, as opposed to 2.6%. And I think that the, uh, the, the, the one statistic that really haunts me, <clears throat> when I came to this state, we were ranked fourth in per capita income. 
You know where we rank now? 15th. And one of the reasons <clears throat> for this is that we, we've learned that each year we lose about $1.5 billion worth of income through net migration. When you complete your tax returns, uh, the IRS records where you lived last year and where you lived this year. And from these data, they can aggregate the information. So we have a 3,000 by 3,000 table showing county to county migration flows. Because they tell us not only the number of people who move, but also the adjusted gross income. And when we've looked at this over the decade in this century, on average, we're losing $1.5 billion. What does that mean? If that money had been spent in Illinois, it would generate between 20 and 30,000 jobs. And remember, our best year, we added over 50,000 jobs. So migration, net migration, is essentially robbing us of about 50% of our potential job growth. So that the, uh, the issues here are very, very complex. Why is it that high-income people are moving out? Is it because we're not providing opportunities? And so what we, we look at here, um, and I have some data about the stimulus. It's not being very important. Um, in terms of uh, the impacts on our state. Um, this is the, the sort of dynamic that, that is really frightening. As we've lost jobs, people have outmigrated. As people have outmigrated, they've taken with them their expenditures. Those expenditures are not generating that ripple effect that you hear about. As a result of that, you have a lack of business expansion, more job shedding. And this is what we've been seeing happening in our state now um, over the last two decades. And in the last three or four years, that process has really accelerated. And the question is, why are we losing jobs? Why aren't firms expanding here? We haven't answered that question. We have a gross product in the state of $580 billion. You know how much money we spend on economic research? Zero. I think that's frightening, that we have this incredibly complicated machine that we don't monitor. My little group, which is significantly underfunded, um, and I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm basically like Muhammad Yunus, I'm a, I'm a beggar. Um, uh, we, we are one of the few operations that are actually monitoring uh, our own, uh, own economy. And I think that's frightening. And I think, as with any sophisticated machine, if you don't pay attention to it, it will become dysfunctional, and that's what we have. So finally, um, basically I ask a bunch of questions here. Why are our leaders so willfully ignorant about the economy they have been elected to serve? Why is it that we have so little interaction with organizations like us, uh, members of the state of Illinois? And I thought that I was being discriminated against, um, but then I found that Gary Becker, the Nobel laureate from the University of Chicago, was interviewed as he was getting on a plane to go out to California to help in uh, Schwarzenegger's transition team. 